so, welcome back, viewers, or possibly a welcome, viewers, that it might be new. What will we be doing today? Why? We might be taking a look at a computer, because this is a computer-related channel, mostly. And what computer would that be? Well, it would be an all-in-one. The client reported that it had stopped working, and I had already did some basic troubleshooting, and it appears to be the motherboard, so we'll see what we can do about that. So, I guess if you don't know how to open one of these, this can be a little how-to video as well. Try this centerpiece out, and then your results may, be, may vary. There might be screws holding this in. There might not. I can't remember if there actually were screws in the first place. If, they were, if there were, I lost them. Take these sides out. And I'm going to have some screws there, but then you can access the memory with no screws. And then the hard drive has one screw that holds it in. Now these are like weird screws, they're like Torx bits, but then they have just a flat head on them. Oh. Proprietary shenanigans at its finest. There's your hard drive. And then the RAM pops out like that. RAM's good. I've tested that. And it's just DDR3 laptop style. I think they could have squeezed desktop RAM in there if they tried. Maybe they had some brilliant reason why they didn't. And then you got your little bitty heat sink there. And then there's a heat pipe going back to about here. And you'll see the the processor shortly. Yeah, let me... Maybe not. Oh my, oh, I thought I was going to lose it. So, got the wireless card here. That's got screws on it too. Um, then, oops. I need, a, I need some different screwdrivers. So, anyways. The client had said that his electricity, where this thing was, had surges every few minutes most of the time, which is certainly not computer friendly, and could have eventually gotten to the motherboard. I mean, I'm sure they weren't terrible sur surges, but maybe the lights looked a little brighter or something. These are some tougher, these are some of the tougher screws. Alright. Uh-oh. Don't want to bend that. But I think I already did. There's your gigantic monstrous heatsink. 
let's see here, AMD Athlon, I think. Athlon 2, I guess they call it, but dual core. Hmm, it's got some, got some good weight to it. I suppose a, it's not much like a single core Celeron with no heat spray. Excuse me, not like a single core Celeron with no heat spreader. Certainly a lot more weight than that. Um, yeah, I guess we're not to the stage of taking the motherboard out yet, so that'll wait. Um, next, you got these screws, I suppose. Mm. Wow, that's about as tough as this little screwdriver can can unscrew. Doesn't got much grip. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need something else. Hope oh, this one fits. Oh, hey, it does. Um, yeah, right now I'm taking the stand off. Um, I might not have to dismantle all of this to get the motherboard out. client has several of these in two different locations and so far this is the only one to fail so they seem to be pretty reliable things considering they're a few years old so probably have a better screw management technique but oh well the system may not have to be put to, put back together if it's not going to work after I do what I do to it. So essentially what I'm going to do is bake the motherboard. I know that probably sounds crazy to you. Bake the motherboard? What, has he lost his mind? This isn't a cooking show. Well, essentially it is a cooking show. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to re disassemble the rest of this. Um, but no point in filming it. There's just a bunch of screws all over the place. I'll link instructions in case you're, you just can't figure it out. But I'll let you know when I get closer. So, now we have a nice disassembled system. And now that's all that's left to uh, take out is the motherboard. I'd like to show you that. You see... I don't know if the camera's going to focus on it, but the... That SATA cable is cracked. I guess from the heat. But that's one of the many reasons why I don't like all-in-ones. It would get way, way too hot. Hmm. Wires underneath are still okay, but... So, when you bake a motherboard, going to want to unplug everything you can from it and it's advised that you cover that you cover the plastic items that remain on the motherboard in aluminum foil but I've gotten away with it without doing that so in this video I'm not going to bother The only thing I think it would do is like make it more easy when you take it out of the oven to accidentally bend the plastic. Or if you accidentally bake it like way too hot. Mm. That's a sticky one. There it goes. So, even chipset heat sinks, jumpers, Anything that can go. Gotta, gotta remember that that is uh, pins 4 and 2. If not, I can just re review the video. Um, 
man, this is gonna be difficult. I can smell it. I better do this off video, or, I, or the next time I actually am gonna damage the board. So, heat sinks are off, everything's undone. Still have a few screws to take out, but next thing you're gonna wanna do is wipe off any thermal paste that remains. doesn't have to be perfect but so once you have a motherboard that is all undone and guess what I forgot to do take this part out and nah, that's not happening on camera either man that is some strong glue that's not coming off but optimally you want to get everything that you can off. And next, you want to pan. Whatever pan you enjoy cooking computers on. And some aluminum foil. And carefully with the hand that you're not using to film this video, you tear some aluminum foil off and if you're going for the protect the plastic things with aluminum foil great do that but you're gonna need four balls of aluminum foil to make a stand so everything gets cooked evenly Take a stand. Fix your stuff. Possibly. Ta-da! And next, we bake it. First, preheat your oven to 385 or so degrees. Just put it in. <laughs> and set your timer for about... Ooh, that, that steam is hot. Um, set your timer for about 10 minutes. And that's the sound of a computer that is done cooking. Oh man, that smells awful. Should have prepared a place to set this. Ooh, forgot about that tape. That's a cinder now. <laughs> oh well. Anyways. Now we let it cool until it's approximately room temperature. You see that? That sorry looking deformed beeper is a good example of why you should cover pla the, the plastic parts when you bake it. I don't think it's de deformed enough to be damaged, but interestingly they call it a buzzer. But as this thing points out, stuff is approximately approaching room temperature. It's at least well below maximum operating temperature, so we can begin to reassemble it. And that should be pretty straightforward. Just disassembly in reverse, right? Got it minimally slapped back together, and one thing I'd like to make sure that you did is make sure to reapply any thermal paste that you may have taken off in the process and this is just barely together enough to test it so hold on what's this we might need that um 
yeah, um, that is, I think that says power connector, but the thing is on top of it, so I can't really read it. How handy. <clears throat> well, so we got a power around here. Um, go ahead and plug that in. Well, no magic smoke yet, so that's a good sign. And the power button is over here. Not nothing. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot the jumpers. That might be why. So let's see, what are we going for? Those were in that position. And then two, four. Nope, not fixed. Your results may vary. It might fix it for you. It might not. 